Hey everybody, my name is Jay Martin. I'm playing as France, and I had a really neat thing happen uh, to me tonight, and I kind of wanted to share it with y'all, and I thought maybe some folks could learn something from it or take some value from it. And what had happened, or to set the stage, is I was hosting a 1v1 on Grassy Flats, and this guy joined my game, and he was a one star, and I was like, okay, you know, all right. And um, and we played, we actually went up playing a couple games. And he was just the neatest guy. My opponent in this battle is this guy named Bonaparte1525. And uh, I think, if I'm interpreting correctly, I think that this was maybe his first multiplayer game ever. And the second game we played was the second ever. And he was a really neat guy. And we played this first game, and, and then we played another game. And... Um, in the first game, he kind of did every noob thing that you can possibly do. And um, in the second game, or we talked a little bit, and I was like, hey, you you know, you want to do this, you want to do this, and everything. And in the second game, he was so much better. And it, what I've... It, I love the noob. I mean, I still think of myself in many ways as kind of as a noob. And um, I love the noob. And what I really liked about this guy Bonaparte is his um, sort of interest in it. Just, it just we we didn't talk that much, really, but but just um, our interest in uh, or his interest, pardon, in it's sort of getting better in between games. He was so much better in the second game. This is the first game that we played, which um, I think might be more of benefit to show to other players and and the thing he does initially is he runs his cav he has two cav units on either flank and he's going to rub his cav in and this never happens to me so i almost didn't react to this but i i do get into square and i get some shooters behind him so uh this this occurs on both sides um he actually almost catches my lights i think he deals some casualties there but um first thing new players don't waste your cav okay just don't randomly mass charge at the beginning of the battle. You, you, the best use of your cav is to A, disrupt the opponent's infantry, and then B, merely to neutralize or trade with the enemy's cav. And you really don't want to do B that often. Um, so the first thing that happened is he... Oh, excuse me. Is he, he charges his cav. And I'm using the rope it up strategy. I've got three old guard on the left with a meat shield in front, and then kind of a regular lights in line. On the right, I have two shooter cav and two lancers over here, and then I have two more lancers over here. I was tr I'm, I'm trying to use more cav lately, so I figured I'd do it. And so, second tip for the noob guys, or actually three tips for the new guys, is he has his lights right here. Now, light infantry are valuable because they have a longer range. And they have a relatively high accuracy. And what's nice about them is you can place them in front of your line infantry. And the line infantry can shoot through them without causing casualties. But in order to do that, you have to click the light infantry behavior button, which will make these guys spread out. When they're standing in line right here, these highland foot are going to just shoot into the backs of the light foot here. So tip number one for using light infantry, uh, it's good to bring them. Um, but you want to put them into the light infantry behavior, and that's a button right over here. It kind of looks like a... Actually, just kind of a weird-looking button. I don't know what to com uh, compare it to. Um, the second thing, new players, is you don't... He, he tries to form, like, the, the circle, the noob circle. You don't want to do that. Um, you see this hinge right here? Um, at this corner, he's not really going to be able to put out much firepower. You want to avoid circling up. I know it, it seems to make sense, um, but but really it doesn't. Um, and and what's going to happen right here is I'm going to push... You've noticed I'm, I'm pushing my infantry right onto that hinge. And you don't want to have a hinge there. Um, the other thing that this does is this really limits you and it lets... Um, your opponent could run. Now he does it actually fairly a smart thing as he moves his guys around to try to pseudo flank me. 
Um, but what I've done is, because he doesn't have any cav left, essentially I'm playing an opponent with no cav, is I've decided to move my line that previously was behind my lights out to extend my line, which will let me flank him. So that was a great move that Bonaparte made right there, but without any cav, I can leave my lights out by themselves right here, and um, this lets me um, get around his flank. I think pretty soon here... I'm gonna start, and he does another. This is actually another pretty good move. He he has this weird. Oh, he pulls him back. Never mind. He had a, kind of a neat unit positioned right here um, to try to control it. Anyway, I start my assault. I'm rushing meat shield. Then I just tell them to melee charge. The unit right there. What I really just want to do is get my foot unit in here. I'm moving shooter cav around the corner to get in his flank, and he he's actually doing some. I mean, for a guy in his first multiplayer battle, I think Bonaparte is doing some some pretty good things. He's moving. Uh, a foot unit over to control there, but um, again, I'm attacking his hinge really well, so my three old guard are going to get on these two guys right here, and I, I charge Lancers in just to sort of finish the deal. I think maybe he tries to form square there, I don't know, and I, so I just charge my Lancers in and then charge them back out, and, it, and I just rinse repeat over and over. Again, Napoleon does a pretty smart thing. He rushes, he realizes he has a problem, so he rushes his general over and uses the Inspire button, which which was the right thing to do. Um, but it, but then again, you know, there's just... I have, like, a big positional advantage here, and I'm just able to charge the same Lancer units in and out um, right there. And, and that's kind of the deal. So you, you, you don't want to have that hinge or that... Um, that angle in your line, um, because that'll let your opponent really take advantage of you. I think he actually does a smart thing here. He realizes he's in a really bad position, so he just melee charges. Um, moving the general in was a really bad idea. You want to... Oh, he brought Duke of Wellington. Well, yeah, okay. Um, you, you, you also really want to make sure that your general lives. Um, your general provides a morale boost to all of the units in your army. And the longer that general lives, um, the longer he'll control that morale boost. And not only that, but when your general dies, um, y you'll get a huge morale penalty. And I was able to turn the left flank here of Bonaparte um, just with, you know, kind of rushing up and having a local firepower advantage because of the kink in his line and, and because I was able to use Cav to um, charge him. And again, he's doing the right thing. I think he's moving foot units over. He gets the first shot at me. I, I think Napoleon shows some real promise as a player. Um, over on this side, I, I've managed to flank him again. And um, I'm not really... Oh, I get Lancers in. What had happened... Oh, let me pause right here to talk about this. What had happened right here is that Napoleon was running out of units because I was routing some of them. And because I was flanking him, it was forcing him to draw units off. That left him with his light infantry um, unprotected by line infantry behind them. Line infantry is really... Is like, for instance, this um, foot guard unit here... They're, they're really good against Cav because they can use the form square ability. And squares kill Cav. That's what they do. So when infantry really want to kill Cav, they form squares. The problem with light infantry, light infantry are really valuable because they have longer range and better accuracy and all that. But the flaw of light infantry is that they can't form a square, which makes them really vulnerable to Cav. Um, and so when Bonaparte moved his line of tree away from behind his lights, that made his lights really vulnerable to Cav. You, you remember earlier I mentioned that as soon as my opponent's Cav were all gone, that freed me to move my line of tree away from my lights. Uh, the reason is that the only real big threat to light of a tree on their own is Cav, and if my opponent didn't have any Cav. So you, you need to keep, as long as your opponent has a cavalry threat, you need to keep your light infantry protected with line infantry, is kind of how you want to do it. Um, and because he didn't have that, I was able to, to charge my Cav into him pr pretty successfully there. And, and he... It, it, just goes mainly on the on the on the left or the right side here, which which actually works pretty well. I think he routes a couple of my units. Um, good for him. And you can see how easily my two cavalry units chewed through those line infantry. So you want to keep your line infantry protected with line infantry. 
is what you want to do. Um, just sort of as a concept. And um, anyway, so I, I had a really great time playing against Bonaparte. I think he's a just. I had a great time chatting with him in between games. And the second game we played, he he uh, showed just. I I think improved a ton just over the course of those two games, and I think that once he gets some of these basic tactical concepts down, he'll, um, you know, have, have I think he might turn out to be a, a pretty good player. But I had a great time with him, and, and I thought this was a neat battle just to put up for the new players. Um, you know, some kind of just basic tactical things that you can work on, and uh, stuff like that. And I mean, in the, even in this game, Bonaparte here... I, I think he routed like five or six of my units, you know, and I I've played gaming games against good players where I lose no units, you know. So, you know, good for him. I I thought his attitude towards uh, his first multiplayer. Oh, there goes another one. Good for him. Anyway, so I, I had a great time playing with him, and I, and I thought it was a neat experience. I love new players and uh, helping them uh, improve and. And, and get better and everything. So I want to say uh, thanks for him to playing with me. I, I had a great time, or a couple of games that we got to play. And I want to thank all of you for watching, and if you're looking for more information, you can check us out at twreplays.com.